I was swallowing. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Everything okay? I just got a lot on my mind, man. Yeah. Don't know what to do with it. I understand. Life can be heavy sometimes. It is very heavy right now. Hey, sipping. Very heavy right now. Anything I can do for you? No, sweetie. The only thing fixed it is gone. That's the only thing that can fix it. Yeah. Okay, you got to move out of my way. Thank you. <laughs> is that your dog? Oh, no, was my, well, one was my cat and one was my son. They, they walk in front of me and then they stop. And then they walk a little bit more and then they stop. <laughs> hey, space cat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Haley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you wanting me to check the basement? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's water. We got a lot of rain last night. We got a lot last week, but this week we hadn't got any. I spent yeah. um, Thursday cutting all this grass around here. And getting it weed eaters. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to get my basement to dry so I can fix it. Easy top. Every time it gets dry, it was completely dry yesterday. It rains. And then it goes. You don't have a, a submerged pump down in your basement? No, they don't have one here. And that's one thing we're looking to get into or get, get into, looking to get one put in. It's just huh, everything else. You know, we bought, I bought the house and, um, and knew it needed work. I mean, you know, and so try to do what we thought was most important first, not realizing how much water the basement got. Yeah. yeah that's my, with me, my properties, I, um, bought them when they went into foreclosure mm -hmm. and um because a lot of times the houses are damaged you know when mm -hmm. they hit a foreclosure oh, hold that in. it's oh, hardly oh, ever you find a yeah. house in foreclosure that's in good shape that you don't have to be talking to mm -hmm. but um i buy them in foreclosure and then i'll remodel them even the ones I don't live in full time or the ones I've run out, I'll remodel them. Yep. And I do it myself, so it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, and it's nice. The, like, that's kind of the thing, you know, we knew we would have to. Then this was a uh, one that you could live in it while working on it. So that was the nice part. And I wouldn't have to move too far, and, you know. Yeah, this one here that i'm at right now is um i bought it when it was in foreclosure um when it first went in foreclosure they had it for um 89.99 and i said i wasn't investing that much into a house and um so i went to the realtor and went and looked at a couple and then he started to pull up in the driveway at this one. And um, I told him, I said, you might as well go ahead and back yourself out. I told him <laughs> I wasn't doing nothing over 40. He went to laughing at me. And he talked, called me, you know, by my name. And he said, um, you know, five minutes before you walked in the door, they dropped the phone yeah, yeah, yeah. down 39.9. I said, really? And he said, yeah. And it's 3,000 square feet. 
and I said, um, well, we look at it, and we came in, and I looked at it, and I know, you know, it was going to have to have a lot of work done on it, so. Yeah, and when was that? Like, what year was that? I bought this one in um, 2000. I've been on this one for 22 years. Yeah, now, like, it was, so here, just where I live, you can't even, it's really, really hard to find a house under 90,000-ish that is not horrible, you know? So, I mean, this one, it needed work and everything else, but it was livable. Everything else that I ever looked at or whatever, it that you couldn't even move into it at that point. So... I went ahead and had the electricity and stuff hooked up on this one after I closed out two days. It only took me two days to close out on it. And uh, I just moved in it and worked on it while I was living in it. Yep, and that's what I'm doing. My bro one of my brothers that passed away last year, the one that was in passed away in July. He was the rebel of the family, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He was a biker, so I knew how life with them goes, and I laugh at him. I still sit and think about him a lot, but when I moved in this one and he's doing all the work, he said, you ain't got no more brains than a penny is. Oh my God, I got to go shopping for everything. And about three weeks later, he came back by him and a couple of the guys that was in the biker group. Mm -hmm. I had done done the inside, and when they pulled up, I was on top of the roof tearing off the fence. Oh. And they pulled up, and they looked up on the rooftop, mm -hmm. and they said, look at that idiot up there. No. And uh, I looked at them, I said, y'all think y'all so manly? Why don't y'all um, climb off of them hogs y'all riding and um, shoot up this hill ladder? With some of them shingles that's down there on that ground and lay them on the rooftop for me and then y'all can shoot back off and go and do the thing. So they did take the shingles up for me. And, uh, it took me doing the roof by myself a little over two and a half weeks and that's me working on it from daylight to dark. But Investments are good at times, but then when it's tax season, it's not good. Mm -hmm. yep. and, renting them, and renting them out, I got some good tenants in some of my houses, but then I got other ones, you know. Yeah, I I hear that. That's so. They don't take care of anything. Yeah, that's like. And that field is kind of like when somebody does daycare, like, so you can get, you can do certain things to get daycare assistance, but do you want to get that daycare assistance? Because I'm not, they don't care as much as people that have to actually pay for their stuff. So then like yeah. those with the housing assistance, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because they don't pay for it, so they're not going to care for the stuff as much. Yep. And believe it or not, a lot of those that is living on Section 8, well, that's what they call it in the state I live in. I don't know what it, they call it in other states. I know in Oklahoma it's considered Section, section 7. Mm -hmm. but, There's good um, ones out there. There really is. It's just, you know, but, a lot of people, if they don't have to pay for it, they don't care about it. No, they don't. And the ones that actually gets the housing, Section 8, they'll destroy because, you know, they're not paying for it. Mm -hmm. And if they are paying, they're only paying like 112 depending on how many is in the fa um, children you have in your family. And they have the guideline, you know, if you own housing. Um, the elderly now is a little different than, you know, single mothers, single Yeah, mothers. do they have separate housings there for, you know, like elderly or disabled? Because they do here, um, yeah. you know, and so that they're not mixed in with, you know, big lar or large families and stuff like that. So it's more quieter. And They have like the um, senior 
apartments. Yep. Um, but some of them seniors now, they, they can be, be rowdy too now. Oh, they can. I know. Because <laughs> my brother, he was in um, a senior apartment complex at one time before he went back to Alabama. And I tell you what, that office, they called me every single day because um, they know I was the only one that truly even us as children growing up, my mom would tell me, go get your child, because if I get him, he ain't going to like what I give to him. And I'd go jack him up and tell him, boy, if you get me in trouble today, I'm going to hurt you. Because my mama, she always believed in, she'd let it build with each one of us until all four of us had done something. And then she'd get all four of us, and she would start from the oldest to the youngest. And I was the youngest. So by the time she got me, she was done mad with them three older ones because she would have to absolutely, she'd take them, stick their head between their knees and hold yeah. that leg up. And that drop cord went to work. And by the time she got me, because she had to do them that way, he was all, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you feeling, OG? I ain't even looked to see who. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but just... uh, he he was just a character, and they finally made him move out. So he moved out, and then he Hi, went to Alabama to Hi, live with, to live with um his daughter that lives in Mobile, Alabama. And then he was already on dialysis at that time. And when he made that trip to Alabama and he got to Alabama, they had to take him straight to the hospital where his doctors down in Alabama told him, you know, you can have another trip nine hours straight like you did. Um, this is it, can't travel no more. She, he listened, uh, he got on a bus and had eight different stops before he got to South Carolina. By the time they got to South Carolina on the Greyhound bus, they had to get an ambulance to get him off with the bus. Had to go to the hospital. Then he lived with me for about three months. And uh, then he got a place of his own. And he was on the RTA bus going to his um, dialysis when he passed away. And I had to go identify him, even though he had, you know, his ID and everything on it. Family member had to go in and identify him. Yeah. And so. Yeah. But, yeah, the Section 8 here, it varies, you know, and plus with some of the complexes. For their younger people, they have to go wherever housing um, has an uh, opening in the complex. They can't pick and choose. Yep, same here usually. Yep, unless they have a couple of um a couple of openings, you know, they'll give you kind of a yeah, choice. Yeah. But otherwise, nope. It's you. This is the one, and you take it or leave it. <laughs> And if you're an individual that has houses or mobile homes and you fix them where they are approved for Section 8, it's all up to the owner whether or not they want to take that person or not. Because, you know, even though you're on Section 8, you're still allowed to run yep. a credit check, background check. So it throws a lot of people, you know, out of housing because of that. Yep, watch out, really. It does. I mean, they also have to take care of all of the repairs and everything else, too. You know, that somebody would do. Yeah, if you have to get up in the middle of the night and go to the house at the middle of the night when borderline breaks or air conditioner goes out, you got a uh, central unit goes out, you got to make sure they have air and everything else when they're on Section 8. 
that's why I don't understand with, you know, Lisa Richardson, why um, she don't have air in her apartment. Where does she, where does she live? Oh, Pennsylvania, right? Pennsylvania. Yeah, Tracy. Because I know in some states, there that's something that's not really required, but I don't know about Pennsylvania. Or this, they don't, you know, most houses don't come with central air in some states. Or at least maybe, maybe I could be wrong, but I thought I heard that once because um, I had a friend that lived over in California and she didn't have central air and her house was nice. And she said, no, they don't have, not many people have that here. This was like five or 10 years ago. Well, even a window unit, you know, mm -hmm. if that one. Maybe she does and it's broke and she just doesn't want to call them to come fix it because they have to come in her house. No, she said um, the other night that um, she didn't even, she don't want a window unit because somebody offered to get her a window unit. She says she don't want a window unit on the kind of she's just on the second floor. Mm -hmm. And she's scared that, you know, somebody uh, um, pulled the window unit out and come in on her. Yeah, I get that part, but does she does she have one though, and it's just broken, like not a window unit? They are in the wall. Yeah, you know what I mean. They're in the wall, um, and it's like the size of a window unit, but they have a special part that's in the wall. Because when I lived in um, a section eight uh, fourplex or whatever, that's what it was like in mine. It was in the wall, not in the window. They don't have, yeah, see, there are some places. So maybe Pennsylvania is that way too. I don't know. I don't know how hot it really gets there. Yeah, you can also order the ones that um, really don't have to go into a window. You can uh, hook them up on the wall. Oh, yeah, I have one. Well, I have one of those. Or I, I'll show you. Turn my camera on. Hold on one second. I was eating watermelon. <sighs> Hey, Tracy. Hey, Sib. So they have. This is what I have in my upstairs. It's like one of these. Yeah. Yep. And then, yep. It goes into the window, and then we can move it. And I got this because then I can move it in between to go in to go into both rooms. It doesn't get too hot up here, but it's like you want that good airflow. Yeah, I can remember back in the day when um, I was growing up, our house had, you know, air and heat in it, but um, my mama didn't like a gas furnace. She was scared of the gas furnace, but in the wintertime, she just put the dog on oven down mm -hmm. and in the morning times when we got up to school i'd jump up and grab my pants my jeans and my brother's jeans the other two had to fend for themselves but i would the one that passed away in july i'd throw his jeans in the oven with mine and heat them up and run by his door and <laughs> throw his pants in there to him and jump in the bed and put the pants on while they were still warm Yep. And hanging out clothes at four o'clock in the morning and hit cold on a clothesline. And then you took them off of the line when you got home from school. But um, we slept with our windows up. Well, I would sleep with my windows up in my house in the 80s, you know. And never think twice about it. But this day and time, you can't sleep with your dog on windows up. With the way people are. Yeah. Yeah, it's really. So I'm guilty. I do. <laughs> um, I have been. And then my so and then my oldest son is here. I mean, I have my doors locked, but I have my windows open and stuff. And downstairs. But now I go downstairs. My oldest son stayed here last night. And everything is shut and closed. And I'm like, 
and he lives in it. I mean, I'm in a town of 800. He's in now a, a town of 20,000. So, I mean, it's a big difference. <laughs> and I'm just like, I come down and I'm just looking. I'm like, it's so closed down here. <laughs> well, see, the road I live on, let's see, there's one, two, three, four neighbors on the whole road. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of distance in between um, the one that lives on the other side of my woods over here. A lot of acreages in between me and that person. Nobody mm -hmm. can build beside me, behind me, or on the other side of me because there's a little paved road that runs four miles down and then it goes into what they call Little Egypt. Ellie? And then I got a neighbor that lives across the road from me. And then my ex-son-in-law's mother lives cat corners from me. But mm -hmm. they're never home, my ex-son-in-law's mother. Yeah. But um, the one that lives straight across in front of me, the only time you see them out is when they cut the grass or going to the garden or something. And for me, $2 is shipping in here. I'm the acres of cleared land. I go into my woods every once in a while, you know, to deer hunt or something. But um, it's quiet around here until like a holiday comes along and people comes from upstate to go to little Egypt back there. And you can hear them four miles back with the band and fireworks or whatever they do. Uh, yeah. That's how it gets here. It gets, um, we're pretty quiet, but in about July, yeah, just to use that address. Um, in July, it gets really noisy because, you know, South Dakota, they're just motorcycle rally and I live right by the interstate. So all the motorcycles come through and go to Sturgis and yeah. Um, believe it or not, my, um, brother lived in South Dakota for a while in Sturgis with his girlfriend, um, Michelle Fry. And he'd come back down here when winter time, you know, fell. He said too much snow's too cold for him, for his joints. And then he'd go back up when spring came in. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been to South Dakota several times have you well if you come again we'll have to meet up i'm trying to come down there again around well to tennessee kentucky area again so you know sometime this summer you going to mama bears yep i'll go to see her again probably gonna try to shoot because i started a new job <clears throat> in a week and a half so i can't probably shoot to Why you end of august he wants to get up there no not not collective but, but it's kind of it's patient care represent or like you know i can't remember the exact title uh, i'll transfer patients to one line to another put in receipt or race prescriptions that kind of stuff that's not bad yeah oh. i don't have to collect money so that's the good thing because you know as much as a person like doesn't think about it that is mentally draining and it's not and it's not so much the ones that don't want to pay their bills right it's the ones that you hear are scammed because and then they don't have any money to pay their bills yep. um, and that's the ones you feel for because you know i mean being on here and seeing what you see on here it's yeah it's very well believable. <laughs> yeah, I um, worked in collections one time, and it was like, you know, some of them would cuss you out. Some mm -hmm. would cuss you out. I had this one lady tell me, said, well, I tell you, it was over a car. She had a car, and it was repossessed, and the finance company was trying to collect what was left owing on the car, right? 
Mm-hmm. And I understood where the people was coming from, really, you know. And I was trying to be nice. But this lady told me, she says, ma'am, as long as she got me to call every day, you'll always have a job because you'll never get that money. Yeah, I heard that before, too. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you got me to call. And I did, too. Then I started feeling sorry for some of them. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't like having to call them because I started feeling sorry for them. Mm -hmm. And so I changed up from collections and then I went to work for finance companies. And then you would have to go out to the people's houses and whatever they had put on collateral, you know, for those little small loans and they don't pay the bill, you got to collect it. Mm -hmm. You got to take the collateral. And I had to go in and take a TV and a VCR because it was on the note. And a little boy <laughs> sat down on my foot and wrapped his arms around my leg and asked me, please don't take his cartoons. Mm -hmm. And it broke my heart. So I left it, I put it back, hooked everything back up for them. And I told them, I said, I'm gonna make this here payment that y'all are behind. But make sure y'all make y'all's as payments. On time, don't come in and renew this thing ever again. I said, because here it is, you sitting at 63% interest on this yep. and so then i started getting wise you know they'd come take the loans out and 63 percent is lot on a 300 dollars note you know yep i tell them y'all know y'all got to put collateral down so when y'all run back to y'all's house to get the VIN numbers off of your tvs your vcrs your lawnmower um scramble your numbers before you walk in this door and hand them to me please yep i always i worked for um a payday loan type thing and if you took a hundred dollar loan, you paid it back in two weeks, you were paying a hundred and if you paid the back full, it was $120 you were paying back. So it was $20, right? And that is not so bad. I mean, it is, but it's not. And then I, but it is the ones that would make the $10 payments every two weeks that it got up to be three, $400 that they were paying back and they didn't understand that. And I always told people, I said, even if you can pay $2 more, on what your norm what you can pay that is going to take like ten dollars they off of your final if you're going to continue to pay this they didn't understand that i'm so glad they got rid of payday loans because there were so many people that get, just got stuck you know here yeah. in south carolina they still have payday loans do they they don't in south dakota they got rid of them that's that's why yeah. i lost my job to them because they closed them all down and but, a lot of people uh still go to those payday loans it's really, I, I noticed it's a really hard, vicious cycle to get out of, right? Because a lot of them, they would take the loans out. The, where I worked at, the max was 500 that a, certain people could turn, um, if they had that credit to take out. They would take the 500 out, um, come back in two weeks, pay the full amount back, which was the 500 plus however much interest, but then have to retake the 500 back out again, you know? So then it just became this vicious cycle of borrowing $500 every two weeks and paying this ungodly amount of interest. Yeah, and these here cash advance where, you know, years ago they had cash advance where you could walk in with one of your personal checks mm -hmm. and write them a check. Yep. They give you that amount of money, but they charged you so much for yep. doing the cash advance. Now... And Oh, go ahead. And my mom, she passed away in 2011. Well, the other day, I had to go up to the um, police department containing something. And a police officer looked at me and says, 
how can I get in touch with your mama? I said, what you mean get in touch with my mama? Both of my mamas died. I said, one died in 1970. I said, and the other one adopted me in 1970. Which one you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, you know, the one that raised you from a baby. I said, okay. And uh, I said, what you looking for her for? Hey, Tim. And there was a warrant sitting on my mom. Oh, well. From, now she passed away in 2011, but somebody had gotten a hoax to her checkbook. And I know who did it. Because there was only one person that had my mom's wallet and pocketbook. Had took and wrote a check to the place called Cash Advance. Yep. And signed my mama's name. Well, she writes just like my mama. Anyway. How could she do that, though, if it wasn't her? Don't they have to match the ID? She looks so much like her biological mama until their driver's license. If you covered up the names on it, you couldn't tell them apart. Yeah. You could not tell them apart. She looked so much like her mama. And in 2014, she had went to that cash advance. And that's what she had done. And I looked at him. I said, well, let's walk right over here to the courthouse. Go in probate's office. I said, because my mama's estate has not been closed out yet. It's been ever since 2011, and it still ain't closed out. And there's a reason why it ain't been closed out. And uh, we went across over there, and he seen where she had passed away. I said, now, look where this one has signed this paper. And then go look at that warrant that you got and go to where they're trying to collect it and look at the check and do a handwriting analysis. I said, it's going to be the same person. I said, how a dead woman go come up out the grave and sign a check? I said, so you better get that one off my mama. I said, because she ain't never been in trouble a day in her life. She died Pentecostal holiness, member of a church for 35 years. I said, so you better be clearing her name and getting it off of the records and put it on the right person. I said, are they going to be a big problem? But shoot those title loan places you take your title in there and they charge you 300 percent interest yeah it's crazy her day my brother that lives baby brother that lives down in florida i was 14 when my mama adopted him and um so he kind of feel like my kid you know but he ain't my kid he had um carried his truck to a title loan place and got a title loan on it. And I helped him out, you know, cause he was down at Myrtle Beach and damn title loan place sent the record down there to go pick his truck up. Cause he had been hiding his truck and he had went to the beach for the weekend. Not thinking they'd find it down there, you know, but his ex-wife squealed him out where he was at for him to go get it. So I had to go get him from the beach, and then that was on Sunday. I had to go get him, and then that Monday, I carried him up there to go get his truck. And I paid off the title loan place, and it was 300% interest plus late payments. Then you had to go to a whole different town to pick the truck up in. Mm-hmm. Tow yard. And it's three hundred dollars a day that for it sitting in a tow yard for Sunday and Monday. It was six hundred dollars to get his truck out of tow. 
almost not worth it after someone for some vehicles. Nah, it wasn't worth it, but he, he had to have a ride, so and then it finally blowed up on him. And so I gave him a little Nissan um pickup truck I had and he's been driving it. He's got another one since he moved to Florida, but he'll tell anybody there ain't enough money to buy this Nissan from underneath me when I was walking eight miles to work every morning and eight miles home and was doing it for a year. I made him do it for a year where he'd learn a lesson what to appreciate a vehicle for when it's gave to him. Because if you actually think about it with me bonding his butt out of title loan, I gave him a truck. <laughs> Of course, I had gave him his first vehicle when he first got his license very, uh, when he was young. Hi, Tammy. Yeah, it's really nice here, Mrs. Peacock. It's like, I don't know, 60s, but it's been raining. It's supposed to get up like 84 here today, but it don't feel like it. It's got a little breeze going. Of course, I have a lot of trees around me, whether it can be real hot and I still have a breeze that comes up on the hill. But it's not supposed to get that hot here today. Last week now, it was running in the 90s. Sorry, if you heard the siren go in the background, it's my, uh, it's noon. We, I still live in a town where they go off at six in the morning no at noon and six at an evening. Yeah, they, um, you, I can hear them from the interstate because I'm like a mile and a half off the interstate. So I hear them flying on the interstate all the time. And then when they having all the parties back here behind me in little Egypt, they, um, cops and ambulances and fire trucks are constantly running beside my house, especially in the middle of the night. Melissa, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If you had a spouse. No, oh, I don't want a spouse, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't want one, girl. I done heard you say that a thousand times. But if you had a spouse that um, has came down with dementia and sundowning, you know what sundowning is? Yep, I do. Had dementia and sundowning. He's in the first stages of dementia, but the sundowning be so bad when it starts late in the afternoon, it'll start even though they're on medication, it still don't control it 100%. And they took, and the doctor has asked for his driver's license to be turned in. Um, he can't be left alone, period. Mm -hmm. And they had never been abusive before, but they have turned abusive. Would you put them in assisted living or would you keep trying to make sure that they are well taken care of. Okay, so that one I can answer easily because I would never put somebody in something, my parents, my siblings, even my children. <laughs> I'm looking at one right now. Or something like that, as long as I knew I was able to take care of them. If I would be able to handle it, you know, sometimes it's beyond your means, 
like you just can't do it but someone like that if especially if it's still in the early stage the only thing that's going to happen is if you put someone like that in a nursing home is they're going to decline so much worse so much faster like if you watch a lot of um if you, i don't know if you see chris and mary on here but chris is a granddaughter that takes care of her grandma and she's got dementia alzheimer's and she's been taking care of her grandma for seven years now um, and right now they're doing a trip across the United States because, and Mary is a lot to handle. However, and people give her, give Chris a lot of shit and flack for how she takes care of Mary because she's always on the go with her, takes her places, does this and that. And sometimes she does make a scene, but she firmly believes, and I do too, that Mary would have probably been gone by now if she would have just stuck home with her and did stopped doing everything that they she did growing up because they traveled all the time they went places they went sky scoping you know all this stuff and um if she would have stopped doing that with her she thinks that her grandma wouldn't even be here by now because that's she's losing all of what she used to do does that make sense yeah it does yeah. and you know i feel the same way and yeah. this person, his mother, his grandmother on his father's side, she had dementia and was put into a nursing home. His mother had fell and had hit her head on the corner of the refrigerator. And his sister mm -hmm. and niece had just taken his mom and knowing that she was on blood thinner had taken her and just put her to bed. And the next morning they heard something gurgling and it was her mm -hmm. gurgling on her own blood because she had an aneurysm in her brain from oh, no. her head on the refrigerator. So she has been through several um, brain surgeries. Now, I take him to go see his mother but when I take him to go see his mother, it's harder on him than him not seeing her. Because yep. when he goes into the room, he she don't know who he's who he is. Mm -hmm. um, her daughters can walk into the room and she don't know her two daughters. Yeah, and they lose it all, you know, and that's but hard if, for family if, members. Uh, if I walk in, whether they have her sitting at the nurse's desk or if she's in her room, and I walk in and I'll say, woman, what are you doing? She knows dead who I am. She can call me by my name. She'll hold a normal conversation with me. But when he tries to talk to her, she don't know who he is. Do you see her a lot more than he does? No. No. Um... I don't see him more than she does. She never liked me as a daughter-in-law to begin with, because when she first met me, she told him, said, and me standing right there too. Thank God my cousin was with us because my cousin lived with um, my husband when me and my husband met. And so, Thank God my cousin was with me because she, and I was, you know, only 26 years old when me and him met. And she looked at me and she looked at my husband. Well, his stepdad knew who I was because I grew up in the neighborhood that all of his brothers was in. Mm -hmm. and she, she looked me from my high heel shoes all the way up to my face and told my husband, says, that ain't good enough for you. Oh. And I went to grab her and my cousin picked me up around my waist and carried me out the door. Said nope. <laughs> and you know my husband, the song by Frederick Railroad, um, I like my women on the trashy side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He backed himself out of his mama's door and poked his head in it. And he and he looked at his mama and went to laugh. And he said, "Well, mom, I like women on a little trashy side." And he had been married before. 
he married me, and I had been married before I married him. 